God bless you, God bless you. There's a word from the Lord. I would that you would turn your attentions this morning to Matthew, the second chapter and the 11th verse. When you found it, you signify by saying amen. Still looking, say wait, Pastor. Amen. Matthew 2 and 11. Matthew 2 and 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child where Mary, his mother, with Mary and his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gold and frankincense and myrrh. Let us read verse number 11 together this morning. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. God bless you. I want to talk about the greatest gift. Yes, sir. The greatest yes, sir. gift. Yes, sir. The greatest gift. Yes, sir. Can you help me say it? The greatest gift. The greatest gift. The greatest gift. My brothers and sisters, when you uh, cruise this particular message this morning in this Christmas season, I was telling you on a few Sundays ago how the world is trying to take everything, uh, take Jesus out of everything. Uh, they're trying to take him out of Christmas. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, it was a struggle for Christians years ago just to be able to worship Jesus. And now here it is, we are living in a free country where we can worship him without any distractions, worship him without any problems, and some of us still are not worshiping the true and living Savior. Back in 1780, 1780, a man by the name of Frederick Austin composed a song by the name of 12 Days of Christmas. And I was telling them this morning that I sort of let that song just go over my head because I thought it was something like a children's song. I didn't really know the meaning behind it and I was wondering why was this song constantly saying every Christmas. Well, when he wrote this song, it was a Christian code song. It was a code song to put the word of God out there without everyone knowing what was going on. See, some folk out there now that don't want you to say Merry Christmas. They want you to say Happy Holidays. But my brothers and sisters saying Happy Holidays just takes Jesus out of my Christmas. And you can't take Jesus out of Christmas because that's the reason we're here this morning celebrating this season. It's all about Jesus. Tell about three folks that it's all about Jesus. The 12 days of Christmas is a Christmas carol that is written in code to the display Christian truths. And my brothers and sisters, there are truths in our belief. Uh, contrary to some, I, I just believe that he was born in Bethlehem, and wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid on a manger because there was no room for him. I just believe that. I believe he was born of a virgin, a miraculous conceived by the Holy Spirit. And when I looked at this particular 12 days of Christmas, I began to go down and began to do some research and see exactly which one it was all about. And, 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 and as it started out, it says, on the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Uh, for a long time, I thought that this was about a man and a woman until I realized our true love is really all about Jesus. Can I get some help? Yeah. When I looked at this thing on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. It's, can I get some help in here? Yeah. Notice what it says here. On the first day, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. And I wanted to know what did a partridge have to do with Christmas? A partridge in a pear tree represents Jesus the Christ, the Son of God whose birthday, my brothers and sisters, we celebrate on December the 21st, which is the first day of Christmas. 
in the song, notice here, Christ is symbolic today. He is symbolically rather, rather represent and presents himself as a mother of a partridge that forages injury to decor the predator. So what are you saying, Reverend? I'm saying look at this, this partridge. She's able to give up her life for her little chicks. She's able to act as a decoy to take the predator away from her nest. She's able to, uh, she's willing to work as a decoy to act as though she has been injured. Can I get a witness? To, to, to lead the predator away from her nest. Look at this thing. Jesus was willing to die for mankind. Can I get a witness? Oh, look at this thing here. Look at the man was bound for hell. But because of God sending this partridge that was able to uh, place himself as a decoy. Can I get a witness? Distract the devil from overtaking mankind. Jesus was acting like a partridge. Oh, it brings me to that point where, where Jesus says to Jerusalem, when he looked on Jerusalem, he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have sheltered you under my wings as a hen does her chicks, but you would not have it. So Luke 13 and 34, Jesus pictures himself as a partridge. Look at the second thing that says, on the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves. And what in the world does two turtle doves have to do with Christmas? What does it have to do with the Bible? It represents the Old and the New Testament, which together bears witness of God's self-relations in history and creator, creation of the people to tell the story of God to a dying world. On the third day of Christmas. Are y'all following me? My true love gave to me three French hens. And you see, I'm from the country. Why not some, say some Dominic hens? Why did they have to be three French hens? But the man was trying to colorize. He was trying to write in codes. And it says three French hens. And what does three French hens represent? It represents the three theological virtues, which is faith, hope, and love. Can I get a witness? 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, faith, hope, and love. Well, on the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four calling birds. Notice what it says, four calling birds. I said over here, so somebody missed it, four calling birds. Somebody missed it in the middle, four calling birds. Choir, you missed it, four calling for calling birds, it stands for, can I get some help? It stands for the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which proclaim the good news of God's reconciliation of the world to himself, to Jesus Christ, for calling birds. Can't you see these four calling birds telling the good news about Jesus Christ? Have you heard? about the Savior. Have you heard? He was born in Bethlehem, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Have you heard about Jesus? Come see a man. Can I get a witness? The four gospels. Oh yes. And when I think about the four gospels, I think about what, how, which each one of them represent. Each one of them represent a symbol. The lion symbolizes Matthew, which represents strength and royal authority. Mark represents a bull. The bull represents rather service and power. Luke's figure really is the figure of a man, which stands for wisdom and character. But look at John. Here's another bird here. John's symbol is an eagle, which represents the deity of Christ. In other words, divine nature 